started with Bible lesson 15. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings to us. I pray that you would be with my students, that you would help them to remember to be thankful for the different things that happen to them throughout the day, whether it's something kind someone does for them or just uh, little things that you have placed in this world that make them um, happy. I pray, Lord, that you would help them to recognize those things that they can be thankful for all the time. I pray, Lord, that you continue to be with um, those people who have been affected by the hurricane, Lord, many on the mainland of Honduras, as well as in many other Central American countries. I pray that you would continue to um, help them as they are rebuilding, that you would give them encouragement and peace. Help us to be able to find ways that we can help with what we have and from where we are. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, everyone. So you either have your packet or you're watching this before your packet came and you're going to get your new packet today. Um, there are a lot of things in there that you are a little bit different. Like you have a paper plate circle. You have a lollipop from Miss Haley. You have hot chocolate from me. Um, Happy Thanksgiving. So there's a lot of things in there. Uh, don't lose anything from your packet. You'll see little paddles in there with A, B, C, and D. You're going to need that for our Zoom call. We're going to have a Zoom call at 10 o'clock on Friday. This is not optional, okay? It is class. It's going to be our Bible class. And I'm going to explain to you what we will be doing in that Zoom call, but it is not an option. You have to be at the Zoom call. So please make sure that you are there. Um, at the Zoom call at 10 o'clock. All right, I'm going to talk to you more about that stuff and the stuff that's in your packet when we get to the homework slide. So we're going to do our verse and then we'll get to that. What is temperance? Temperance is exercising self-control. 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Doth not behave itself unseemly, speaketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. En español dice, 1 Corintios 13, 5, no hace nada individuo, no busca lo suyo, no se irrita, no guarda rencor. Okay, now the time has come. Today's homework, first of all, you need to prepare a thankfulness verse. Okay, so tomorrow there's going to be a program, a Thanksgiving program that is going to be sent out for tomorrow. That is going to count for your Bible class. So you'll watch that as your Bible class. There's no actual Bible lesson tomorrow. This thankfulness verse is something that you need to prepare for our Zoom call on Friday. Just like we have the thankfulness challenge that you're doing, now you're going to need a thankfulness verse. So what do I mean by that? This needs to be a verse that teaches you why you should be thankful, what you have to be thankful for, something like that. So it's a verse that teaches you about why you need to be thankful, why it's important to be thankful. I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. My verse that I'll share with you on Friday in class on Friday is Psalm 118 and verse 1. It's the same reference that's on your hot chocolate packet. Okay, so don't use that reference. Use a different verse than that one. Okay, so use a verse that teaches you how to be thankful. It's okay if you end up having the same verse as somebody else because your perspective is going to be different. So be prepared to share your verse and explain how this shows you um, why thankfulness is important, why you should be thankful, who you should be thankful to, that kind of thing. And I'll start us off on um, Thursday or excuse me, on Friday to kind of give you a little bit of an example, um, an idea of what um, you can say. But be prepared before that with what you what you want to say and be ready to go on Friday. Um, let's see. What else did I want to say about that? Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, it, I'm sure it'll come to me. So, oh yeah, we need to, you need to be also prepared with your thankfulness challenge. You need, you're going to be telling me one person or thing that you are thankful for. Um, make sure that you're sending me pictures of your thankfulness challenge as well. So that I can see that you're being thankful. All right. So one person or thing that you are thankful for each day. And then you'll share one in our Zoom meeting. And then after that, we are going to have a little bit of fun. But I'll explain that in the Zoom meeting. Okay. Continue your thankfulness challenge, like I just said. Continue your 30 things that you are thankful for. 
And then last but not least, this is something that's very important that you do today. You need to write down one person or thing that you are thankful for on one of your leaves that's in your packet and send me a picture of it today. So this is an example. You have a couple different color leaves. This is the red one. Your leaves have lines on them so that you can write on it. It says, I am thankful for, and you're going to write on it in a complete sentence, please, because you guys are big kids. Don't just write one or two words, a complete sentence, something that you are thankful for. And you need to send me a picture of it today. Cut it out, put it against something nice, and send me a picture of it today. I need it today because it, we need to put it in the video for the Thanksgiving program tomorrow. So I need it today, no later than today. Not tomorrow by 11, no, 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 today. So pause your video right now, go do that. By the way, I'll know if you did it because you need to send it to me. So send it to me, pause your video, go do it, send me a picture. Okay. Alrighty. So let me explain. This is not Bible exactly, but I'm going to go ahead and explain the leaf wreath activity. This is something you're supposed to do for tomorrow for homework. So that's why you have that little paper plate. This is just the beginning of mine. It's not finished yet. Okay. But this is to give you an idea of how to get started. For you guys, it would be better if you write on the leaves first, then you're going to glue them. I went ahead to, and glued mine before writing on it. That way I would have a um, uh, something to show you guys. So I just glued this with stick glue, regular stick glue, and it stayed on the plate. So that's all you need. Layla, I'm sorry, you don't have a plate in your packet. So if you can't find a plate, you can just, um, you can make, you can put it on string or something like that and hang it from somewhere, or you can, uh, make a ring, cut a ring out of paper and glue it around the paper or something like that. Um, I didn't have the plates when your dad needed to come and get the packet, so I apologize, Layla. But um, you can be creative and come up with a way to, to make it um, something that's presentable. So you have your leaves. The brown one has no lines, okay? You do not have to write on the brown one. But the other ones, you have to write on all of them, okay? So you have 10 leaves, two are brown. You don't have to write on those two, but the other eight, you have to write a complete sentence about what you are thankful for. So one of them you'll send a picture of to me. If you write on the red one and it's hard to see in your picture, pick one of the yellow or green ones so that we can see what you're thankful for in the picture, okay? If you have like um, correct a corrector pen and you want to write on the brown one, you can, but if you just try to write on it in pencil, it's not going to show up. So you don't have to write on that one. Then you're going to glue them all around the plate. And there you'll have your leaf wreath. And that's what you're going to do on Thursday. So this is not for today. This is for Thursday. But I just wanted to explain what you have to do um, just in case you were confused. Miss Ashley, what do I do? Okay, so that's what you got to do. All right. Let's get started with our lesson. It's actually going to be pretty short today. So we're taking a break from Acts just so we can focus on the idea of thankfulness. Let's look at Luke uh, chapter 17, verses 11 through 18. One thankful leper. Now we've studied this before, obviously, because we've gone through the life of Christ. But we're just going to look at it um, again because this is one of, one of my favorite demonstrations of thankfulness in the Bible. Let's read verses 17 through 13, or excuse me, 11 through 13. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, he being Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So right away we see that Jesus went into a village in northern Israel. So he's going to Jerusalem, so he's going down towards the south, but he's going through Samaria and Galilee. These are northern areas, a little bit of uh, northeast areas of Jerusalem, or excuse me, of Israel. And he goes through a village and he sees some lepers. The lepers, these 10 lepers, they're standing far away and they call out to him. That was necessary because of their leprosy. Remember that anyone who had leprosy, leprosy was a very contagious disease. So they were considered unclean. 
They were not allowed to be part of society. They were not allowed to get within a certain distance of people who were healthy. So they all were had to group together. If they if people were coming close to them, they had to cry out unclean so people would know that they were lepers and would not um, get any closer. So they have to stand far away and and call out to Jesus if they want to talk to him. So they shout out to him, asking him to have mercy on them. They uh, they address him as their master. So they're recognizing his authority. They're recognizing that there is something different, something special about this man. I'm sure they've heard the stories about the different miracles he's done. And so they call him master and they ask him to have mercy on them. That would have been a typical, typical way to ask for someone to heal you. Okay, let's look at verses 14 through 16. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down at his, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So we see here that Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests. This was because when you were um, healed from leprosy or if you happened to get better, which would have been rare, um, in order to rejoin society, you had to go to the priest and he had to ceremonially, bleh, can't say that word, ceremonially declare that you were clean. You were no longer sick. You were no longer a leper. So that was the appropriate thing to do. So notice Jesus never tells them you are healed. He tells them, go show yourselves to the priest. So he wants them to demonstrate their faith that he can heal them by going ahead and going to the priest when they are still lepers and they all all of them had enough faith and obedience that they all turned and went they all believed that jesus would heal them so they all turn and start to go and then as they are going as they are obeying they are healed so that's pretty pretty cool right that's something that they would notice right away it's not like only one of them realized he was healed you're going to know with this disease if you no longer have it. So they realized they were healed. Maybe they started running to get to the priest. Who knows how exactly the rest reacted. But we know that there was only one that turned around. Only one leper, who was actually a Samaritan, not a Jew, came back to thank Jesus. Now, this is significant because the Samaritans and the Jews, remember, they don't get along. Really, the only reason that he was with the these other Jews, and they were most likely Jews because Jesus told them to go to the priest, so it was someone that they would have been familiar with. Samaritans didn't um, didn't go to the the same they didn't have the same way of worshiping, so uh, they didn't go to the same synagogues, so they wouldn't have gone to the priest like the Jews would. So anyway. <laughs> Um, the only reason that the Samaritan was with them was because he was also unclean. So they were all unclean. Um, and he is the only one, though, who recognizes that he needs to give thanks for what's happened to him. That he, uh, that something, someone has done something for him. And the right thing to do is to say thank you, to show his gratitude. And so he turns around, he comes back to Jesus. He glorifies him, it says with a loud voice. So he didn't just say, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. No, he said, oh, praise be to God. You know, he, I don't know exactly what his words were, but he made it, he made a pretty big deal about it. So anyone who was standing nearby, I'm sure, heard that he was thankful and could have figured out why he was thankful. And that brought glory to God. People could clearly see that God had power, deserves to be worshiped through the way that this leper said thank you and glorified God. Let's see what Jesus' response is. Verses 17 through 19. And he said, or excuse me, and Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. 
So Jesus pointed out that 10 men were healed, but only one came back to say thank you. Pretty significant. I want you to take a second and think. If you were one of these 10 lepers, who would you be? Would you be one of the ones who kept going? So excited to be healed. You just want to um, get back to, to normal life. And you just run ahead to the priest without even thinking to stop and thank the person who healed you. Or as soon as you're healed, would you recognize, I need to say thank you. I owe, I at least owe this person. A thank you for the for what they have done for me. They've saved my life. Who would you be? Of course, we'd all like to say that we would be the one who would come back. But would you really? Think about your life right now. Do you say thank you to people? Is this thankfulness challenge that I've assigned to you guys, is it hard for you to do? Do you struggle with it? Do you feel awkward or embarrassed saying thank you to someone? going up to them and saying thank you for things that they do for you? It can be hard, right? So what do you think you would do? Now that's just between you and God, what you would do. And if you feel like you need to improve in that area, then there's no better time to start than the present. Jesus told this man to rise up because he had, the Bible says he had fallen on his face in worship of God. So that, remember, is an extreme sign of reverence to go down on your face before God. And so he told him to rise up. So go ahead, get up. He said, go on your way. Your faith hath made you whole. So because of his belief in God, he was made whole. Now, the others, it doesn't mean that they were suddenly, you know, not healed. They were still healed because they had faith. So they had been healed of their leprosy, but they just were not grateful, not in the way that this man was. Now you might say, well, I'm thankful. I just don't always say it. Okay, but that's not enough because true thankfulness doesn't care about um, what other people might think, doesn't care about your own time, always makes time to say thank you no matter what. Okay, even if you forget and it's maybe a day later, you can still say thank you to people for doing something, for helping you, for doing something good for you. It's just good manners. It's the right thing to do because um, it shows that you have a humble heart. It does take humility to say thank you because you're recognizing that someone helped you. You can do it on your own. <clears throat> so it's important to be like this leper and to say thank you. All right, that's it for today. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you there. And we're going to keep focusing on thankfulness. So what are you guys thankful for? How are your 30 things going? Do you feel like you're running out of stuff? There's so many things that we can be thankful for, but we don't always think of them. And it's not just objects you can be thankful for. Don't forget, you can be thankful for things like free time with your family. Um, getting to go on vacation. You can be thankful for uh, peace about a situation, all kinds of things to be thankful for. So take your time and make sure that you show that um, gratitude towards God for the things that he's given to you. All right, see you in the next lesson. Love you guys very much. Bye.